So on this episode, I'm going to be looking at an image I took uh, called When Yoda Met R2. And it is the Yoda from the Luke Dagobah set alongside the R2-D2 from the Red Squadron set that I picked up from Amazon US. So let's jump over into Pixelmator, the software I use in place of um, Photoshop. Now, in order to uh, get this image started, I'm going to need to recompose this shot. There's a reason why I shoot this wide, so I can get an f3.2 uh, shallow depth of field from my kit lens. So I'd rather shoot wide and then edit in software. So we're just going to go to transform and drag this open with the move tool. Make this slightly larger within my canvas and center the characters. Now I'm going to be using layers in this uh, edit to provide some highlights, which is entirely unnecessary really. I could use the dodge and burn tools to get similar effects, but I like the freedom that layers gives me and it's a good excuse to sort of experiment and, uh, and practice the skills I've learned with regard to layers. So I've now cropped the image to get rid of anything outside the frame that will eat up memory and might impact on any filters that I apply to the image later. And now we need to make a couple of duplicates of this layer. So if you hit Command, Shift and D, you can duplicate the layer that's active. So Command, Shift, D and duplicate, and then I'm going to create another duplicate as well. And I'll hide the first, and we're going to apply uh, curves to the second. This is intended to give some green highlights to Yoda. So I'll use curves, choose the green channel, and I'm going to really pump that up. A little bit further now, I like that sort of wash. And what I'm really looking at is Yoda's face there. So we'll activate this and we'll hit this level, uh, we'll hit this with the curves in blue, up those levels considerably. And this is to add highlights to R2. That should do us now. And we'll hit OK. Now I'm going to hit both of those layers with masks. So add a mask to the R2 layer. And I'm going to add, an R, uh, uh, add a mask to the Yoda layer. And then what with a mask, once you've added them to the image that you're working with, the layer that you're working with, you can then hit them with a black, completely black fill. And it will make the information in that layer invisible. So if you watch now, I'll hit the blue curves adjustment with black and it's gone. And the green curves adjustment with black and they're gone. Now, if I paint over those with white, I can reveal the image within that layer. So let's enlarge this image slightly. And I want to go to the layer, uh, the mask on the layer, paintbrush. And then I want to change the black fill, fill to white. I use X and that flips to the opposite color. And then I can start painting back in the information present on that layer. That's, that's way too rich. So we'll undo that. Command or Control Z. And I want to reduce the flow considerably so that I can build this up, these highlights up in layers. All this is intended to do really is to poke through the darkness of this image, a deliberately dark composition because of the lim limited set I was working with. I just want to hit this image with some green hot spots so that the eye is drawn to the Yoda character. And if I switch layers, I can do the same with R2. Um, again, you can achieve this with, you can achieve similar effects with dodge and burn tools by making areas in the highlights, shadows, and mid-tones um, brighter or darker using those tools. But I like layers. I like the freedom it gives me. I use layers considerably within editing. And so I thought I'd try this out on this image. So it's subtle, but I do like the overall effect. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll group that together, uh, Command G, and then I can rename that group as highlights. Right, the other thing I'm going to do in this edit as well is I'm going to add some effects. Uh, most notably here, I want to add that red dome light. I want to give it a bit of a glow. So I'll add a layer, and then I'll go in with a with a hard edge brush with white as my color. I'll just hit that with a circle 
that I then want to go, I want to use my move tool because I want to transform the shape. So I'll go to free transform, allow me to distort the image slightly and it can fit into the aperture for R2 is done right, just about there. And just as we did in the previous video, I'm going to make duplicates of these uh, light levels, uh, light layers, uh, so that I can make them glow. So I'll have lights um, with, is it light level one, two, and three? I'll have lights with a Gaussian blur value to them. So if we find a Gaussian blur filter, and I'll add that, and I'll add a 5% or 5 pixel blur to the first layer, 15, then you can already see that image starting to glow. And then I'm going to hit that with a 40. And that really gives you that nice soft edge. Uh, I'll add an extra layer underneath those lights layer. This is going to be my background, uh, which I will hit with a black fill. So hit X and I'll swap the color in the paint bucket. And then I'll give that black fill and combined with Command E, I'll combine all those layers to give me that black layer with the glowing white disc. And then we'll hit that with a screen blend so that the black disappears and we're left with the glowing white. Curves, as in the previous video, I can just up the red value considerably to give me a nice red glow from the dome light on R2, like that. That should be enough. And that will poke out through the darkness of this image. And I think we're about done with our light effects for this image. And we can move on now to adding mist to the swamp on Dagobah. That looks pretty good. I like that. The, those highlights from that from those layers really do poke through. So in my assets folder, I should have uh, a selection of smoke that in this image can double as mist for me. So I drag in that PNG. This has got a black background, so we're going to have to blend with screen. I just want to move this into position. We're going to blend this with screen blending. Um, there we go. We'll put that. We'll just move that there slightly. And we once I've got rid of that black, we'll have a better idea of how that's going to work. So let's go down to screen blending. Get rid of the black, so we can see now what that looks like. It's a little bit over the top, so I want to I want to push that into the background a little bit by blurring it. Maybe not quite as harsh as the default, but there we go. We've got a nice bit of blur, and I'm going to reduce the opacity as well considerably um, to sort of make that less intrusive. I don't want to go too far because you start to lose some of the definition of that um, of that miss. Okay, move that back there. There we go. I've made a, a duplicate. It's Command, Shift, and D. And I'm going to transform that slightly so that it's a mirror image. And we'll push that deep into the background. Okay. Okay, let's try different smoke. Now, this one's just a transparent PNG, so it won't need the screen blend option. But I will definitely be hitting this with Gaussian Blur to um, affect just how much it calls attention to itself. In the foreground there, it's as sharp as the focus in the image. So if we drag a Gaussian blur over it, uh, we should be able to reduce that effect considerably. There we go, something like that. And I quite like that. I will reduce the opacity somewhat so that it's not quite as obvious. And let's look, already we're looking a little bit more atmospheric. This is, after all, a dagger bar and the third smoke effect that's going to be doubling for that mist and we're going to flip that and find out what our best orientation will be how this best suits our image and we're there we'll rotate that slightly because that tail on the right hand side i think will fit in with the layer of the set nicely and we'll pull that down there maybe rotate a little bit more get it to fit in around the curve of that log Blur that out slightly and then reduce the opacity to help it disappear. It becomes, it looks a little more mist like that way. Okay, that's looking pretty good. 
Right, so our main characters still remain the focus. We're going to hit this with a vignette at the end as well. So just going to group the, I'll try and keep my workspace organized. So I'm going to group my smoke effects, label them as smoke. So if I need to move them in terms of moving those layers around, they'll move as one. It's good to keep your workspace organized. And then I'll group all the assets for this image, make a copy with Command Shift and D, and I'm going to merge that so that I'll have one flattened image. The group below it are all the separate layers and all the separate assets, but the one I'm going to work with to export my final image will just be one flat image that I can apply the vignette to and I can, and I can apply my watermark to. So there's the vignette. Now this is going to lay over some of the smoke effects we've done and draw the eye, hopefully, to the characters who are, after all, the central focus of this shot. There we go. That's, now that looks, I think, that looks perfect. Let's go to apply that. Yeah, that looks great. So the, 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 the mist should really look like it's on the peripheral, periphery of this image. Drag in my watermark now. And this always happens because the watermark's transparent. It's very difficult to get hold of the actual image itself. So I'll grab the handles and then I'll resize it back down to where I want it. There we go. Move that around. And now that's watermark. So if this gets shared on social media, hopefully it'll lead people back to me. I'll export that. And we're ready to uh, share that on Twitter, Instagram. And what have you? Any other? No, R2. And of course, I'm aware that they met previously, but these two characters are so endearing. And these figures are just so, such a stunning, they're stunning sculpts. Really, really nice couple of sets I've got here to work with. So that's using layers to provide this final effect. Layers to provide the um, highlights on Yoda and on R2. Wholly unnecessary, really, when you can achieve it with. Um, dodge tools, burn tools, you get what you want, but I think it's good to practice using layers, using them in different creative ways. I use them a lot for wire removal and things like that, but here I've used them to sort of enhance these characters and hopefully draw your eye to them. Okay, that's it for this episode, and I'll be back soon with another.